more than 50% of the world's population now live in cities. In 1960, it was just a third. By 2050, the UN predicts that 68% of the world's population will live in cities. In 2017, motorists in London spent, on average, 74 hours gridlocked in traffic. Some people say that autonomous vehicles will solve the urban transport problems. They're imagining those, those platoons of autonomous vehicles, cars, going smoothly along this well-designed space with perfectly designed curb space. I think the challenge that we have here is AVs are tending to be looked at as something as a technical silver bullet. What we understand is that they need to become a part of the existing network and not become something that means that we can avoid um, investment in active modes of transport, avoid um, investment in kind of big infrastructure. For autonomous vehicles to be fully successful, people have to feel safe in public space. Currently, human-driven cars are causing a lot of deaths and accidents. So there's a discussion to be made about how safe do we want the technology to be. The second challenge is around people might not even usually want to share space with strangers. Um, currently, Uber pool is only 20% of Uber rides globally, for instance. So there is a big change required in, in those behaviors and attitudes. Agent-based modeling has the capability to provide powerful insights into impacts on different types of people. So how are different people who have different income levels impacted by this new scheme, this new public transport scheme or this road pricing scheme, for example? Those are the outputs which currently decision makers and city authorities just don't have the answers to. They just don't have that at the moment. Agent-based modeling is the modeling paradigm where you can simply say that people want to do X and Y, so they want to go from home to work, and then the agents can interact with each other by going on the same road, creating congestion by lots of people picking the same mode of transport, or equally they can begin to adapt to each other. You can start to overlay energy data, health data, or weather data, but actually before we kind of go too far down that line, I think having good travel data is quite important. Having good data to benchmark against and good data to input into the model is, is key. What we're trying to move away from is optimising cities around transport. What we really are trying to do is move towards what motivates people's choice of travel. So in order to really understand that, we have to actually start focusing on people and trying to get data about an individual and their movement. And that's basically what's led us to developing Mobility Mosaic, which is a next generation travel survey. What we're doing is using your smartphone to track your location for then us to work out how you have traveled so that we have then that data that can inform changes, planning, updates, any of those sorts of things. We only collect data for one specific purpose, which is a specific study that we're operating. So we're only collecting the minimum amount of data we need. And then at the end, we shut down that infrastructure and say, okay, that data for that study is now finished. We then will delete that data when appropriate. Arup is really fortunate in that we have a wide range of different clients from all around the globe who are, are telling us every day what their problems are. What's really helpful for us is to be able to extract different trends from different types of cities and so we're able to see what are the big kind of existential problems so air quality climate change how do we um, make things more affordable to people who need them and so what we're able to do is extract out all of those problems from all over the world and pair them up with the mathematics the computer science the data science about what we can actually do and so research in ARP enables us to bring in all of those really high big priority problems and put them together with what's possible 